where we really started was uh, with an observation uh, that humans are amazingly good throwers. Uh, and we can throw both with incredible accuracy and incredible velocity. Uh, and people have noticed for years that humans are amazing throwers. If you look at any professional baseball player or cricket bowler, they can throw 90 to 100 miles an hour many times over and over again during a single game. But really, I think the most amazing thing is what normal people can do. Uh, so if you look at sort of any uh, Little League baseball game in any town in America, you can find a 12 or 13 year old kid that can throw 60 or 70 miles per hour. Uh, and that to me is really remarkable performance. That ability comes into better focus when you consider what chimpanzees, who are our closest uh, living relatives, can do in terms of throwing performance. Chimpanzees are really athletic. They're very strong. They can lift hundreds of pounds. They can run essentially right up a tree, but adult males can only throw about 20 miles per hour, which is about a third of as fast as a, you know, a 12 or 13 year old boy. Why is it and how is it that humans are so good at throwing? When did that occur? It must have occurred sometime during our evolution that we became really good at throwing. Uh, and probably arguably most important, why? What we started to look at was the mechanics of how someone throws a, an object, a projectile, a ball. The really remarkable thing that humans do is they store energy in their shoulders. Uh, and a sort of good analogy for, for how that storage occurs is a slingshot. So with a slingshot, you pull really hard on those elastic bands that store energy in that slingshot. And you're doing the same thing with your shoulder. Uh, when you're actually throwing, you're rotating your shoulder back, right? And you're, you're essentially stretching the elastic bands that are your tendons and your ligaments in your shoulder. Uh, and those store energy. And then just like a slingshot, when you release that slingshot, that elastic energy is returned and it allows you to really accelerate uh, an object such as a rock forward. And that's the same thing that's happening with our arm. And we studied that in some collegiate baseball players who we had in our lab and we stuck reflective markers on their arms and their torsos. And we recorded how they moved in three dimensions. But what you'll see is that as the arm is sort of rotated back, that's when we think that elastic energy is being stored. Uh, and then the arm is rapidly rotating forward. A number of changes that have occurred during our evolutionary past to the shoulder and the arm uh, and the torso really um, make this elastic energy storage possible. And those changes occurred around two million years ago. We see hunting behavior emerge around that time. It's the earliest evidence of hunting in terms of bones that were butchered uh, and things of that nature appear around two million years ago synchronous with this behavior. We think that throwing was probably most important early on in terms of uh, hunting behavior and enabling our ancestors to effectively kill big game and, and get more calories for their diet. Uh, and why is that important? Why, is, why does hunting matter? Uh, hunting probably matters because more calories in your diet means you can build bigger bodies and bigger brains and have more babies. Uh, all of the things that matter for evolution. The interesting thing about the way that we threw in the past versus the way that we throw now uh, is that there are very few people that throw to hunt anymore. Mostly the way people throw today is during sports, right? Uh, and the remarkable thing about sports is that you're throwing using this incredible ability, but you're doing it hundreds of times in a couple of hours. And that wasn't the case uh, for how we would have been throwing uh, when, when we were evolving and using this to hunt. Uh, so this re remarkable ability, which we were evolved to do, doesn't really sync up with the modern usage. And what happens is that people actually injure their shoulders and they injure their elbows. So at the end of the day, the ability that we have to store elastic energy in our shoulder makes us great throwers, but it's also injuring us. There are a number of things that we're doing to follow this research up. One of the things that we're doing is actually looking at what early projectiles actually were. So we know that throwing probably evolved around two million years ago, or at least the capacity for throwing. But we don't see evidence of projectiles in, in the archaeological record for about a million and a half years. So what was it that we were throwing, and how is it that we were killing uh, these animals? And one way that we can start to look at that is to look at the killing capacity of, of things such as sharpened wooden spears, right? What happens if you try to kill something with a just a sharpened wooden stick? Uh, can you do it? How much energy is required? Can individuals actually throw these things effectively and use them to hunt, and that's what we're looking at next.